I almost died getting a nose job done. I'm scrolling around and I actually find a guy that I've matched with previously on Hinge. This How old was he? 65. Why did you Hinge. organically match on Hinge? <laughs> oh, Mia. <laughs> I showed up to a med spa with a fake ID, pretending to be one of my cousins. <laughs> it was an experiment. It was basically a hypothesis I had and I had to go test my theory. I've been banned off TikTok 10 times. <laughs> You always they, come back though. They let me back in because I'm persistent. <laughs> let me in. It has the same consistency of slapping some guy's fucking bald ass head. If this man had no penis. Hello everyone. My name is Mia Dio and I'm the internet's favorite faux sugar baby. I am here with Blair Wong. That's the nettiest girl on the internet. And today we're bringing all you social media addicts a new juicy, crazy, wild podcast. So with that being said, welcome to the Distrust Fund. We are going to get really vulnerable today, expose a lot of secrets, laugh, be friends. So make sure you're listening. Do I have a sugar daddy? Does Blair have a sugar daddy? How the f- F, do we afford this lavish lifestyle? How do you look so perfect? Is it natural? How much money did I actually spend in plastic surgery? I'd love to tell you about it, but <laughs> in order to get that point across, you guys have to stay tuned. One of the most asked questions Mia gets on our social media is, do you have a sugar daddy? I, wow, funny enough, I actually have a statement prepared for this. <laughs> Uh, that may or may not have been written by my sugar dad, I mean boyfriend. So let's begin with that. <coughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Mia, and I do not have a sugar daddy. In fact, I actually sometimes offer to buy him gum from the gas station <laughs> because I am so not into money. My sugar daddy may... <sighs> My boyfriend may or may not be responsible for paying my rent, my bills, my hair, maybe my tits, but he just does that because he is so kind and he just loves me so much. And I, in return, buy him gum and toilet paper. Um, my co-host, everybody, Mia Dio, not only is she perfectly gorgeous, but also can read. Yeah, I can read, but sometimes I struggle with vowels. Like, I owe you... <sighs> Oh, I don't owe anyone shit. <laughs> Although we seem like crazy, lavish sugar babies, we are actually very chill girls. As I quote by Mia's boyfriend, you guys are very cheap. <clears throat> <laughs> it takes a lot of money to look this cheap, okay? Um, <laughs> Although Mia and I seem very unemployed, <clears throat> we are actually... Fun employed! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we've been content creators for about five years now. I think between us, we have about 10 million followers. That's rounding up a little. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do math. I'm too pretty to add. Um, so in case you don't know who I am, that's okay. Not everyone has expensive taste. I am the internet's favorite faux sugar baby. Uh, I play a character on TikTok and Instagram and really anywhere that they allow me on um, as a Russian sugar baby lifestyle coach, makeup guru, supermodel now, so travel influencer, food connoisseur, wild animal whisperer, and professional STEM instructor. In your defense, you've never been banned off anything. I've been banned off TikTok like 10 times. <laughs> you they, always come back though. They let me back in because I'm persistent. <laughs> <laughs> let me in. I think persistence is one of the most important things in social media. It took me a long time to go viral, especially because I started out on YouTube. I made a lot of crazy YouTube videos, eating diets of celebrities and famous people and reviewing things, makeup, clothes, fashion. I will do anything that gets views, basically, um, because I'm here for a check. I know that a lot of creators like to say they do it for love. <laughs> I've never done anything for love in my life, even get married. So Blair says that she doesn't want to do anything for love, but she falls in love with a new person like every like week and then decides that she hates them after 24 hours. We can talk about how easily I get the ick, but it's also my fear of commitment. I almost did not want to do this podcast because I was terrified of signing a deal for this many episodes. But here we are. I got forced into it against my will. <laughs> can we, can we, <clears throat> real quick, how many times have you been engaged? Twice. I'm collecting engagement rings. I told Mia that once my hand gets filled out, I will walk down the aisle. I need three more, Mia. Bro, you're like Thanos. Like, 
All your hopes and dreams. <laughs> your money. <laughs> Fucking gone. All right. Well, <laughs> this episode, we told you guys that we we're going to be diving into uh, sugar baby stories, plastic surgery, all of the above. So let's just go right into it. Um, despite my previous jokes, I am not actually a sugar baby. I have a boyfriend who loves me very much and takes care of me. Wink, Are wink. you reading the script now or? I am not actually. I actually have half of it memorized. Thanks for <laughs> inquiring. Um, no, I, but just because I'm not a sugar baby does not mean that I do not have extremely high standards for my partner. So I may not be a sugar baby escort, sex worker, all of the above, whatever, but I'm not going to fucking date a broke guy. It's not going to happen. I'm I'm used to a certain standard of living. I can also provide myself a very nice standard of living. So I don't believe in settling at all for your partners. You can be picky. You should be allowed to have standards. You should you should be picky, except for Blair. Her standards are ridiculous. <laughs> She's like, I want guys to be rich as fuck, unemployed, clingy, and virgins. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am really happy we started this actually because I think you get to humanize yourself in front of your audience because honestly when I first saw your profile I was a little terrified of you so if you guys don't know how Mia and I met she actually DM'd me and I was scared of her so I ignored her for a second and I did like I didn't see it um and our audience is I knew you did that <laughs> you've been lying this whole fucking time you're like oh my god like I just like I just like got lost so I DMs that I didn't see it until like two weeks later. Um, so Mia DM is me asking to hang out. I'm terrified. However, I go. She picks a very interesting sushi restaurant. Very expensive. In my defense, on the weekend, that place is fun as fuck. Okay. It's so much fun. I had my like 20th birthday there. I had a great time. I had a blast. Um, so I'm t I'm used to going to that place on like Saturdays, Sundays. But she asked me to hang out on a Tuesday. So obviously we both come dolled up, latex, seven inch heels, corsets, hair teased to the gods. And we walk in to this very chill, nice virgin family establishment <clears throat> looking like hookers. Yeah, looking like absolute <laughs> whores. The staff, they were super entertained. They're like, oh, Take look at what the fucking wind brought in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's paying for you tonight? <laughs> like, don't breathe in too hard. You might just catch chlamydia. <laughs> like, they they for sure thought that we were completely out of place. I would agree. We had a great meal, though. A wonderful meal. And after that, we're like, well, now that we're dressed like whores, <laughs> do you want to go out? Should we go to, like, lounges and clubs? We don't come home until, like, 7 in the morning. And we were best friends ever since. Yeah. And did we get any better at dressing or going home on time? No, I will still <laughs> dress like a latex dominatrix. Okay. For sure. Um, And I feel like we a little bit... Um, How you dress does not make you a whore, by the way. I am a whore, so I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I am a whore. <laughs> um, so obviously I knew Mia's social media persona was like kind of built up and made up after that. And I think a lot of you guys thought we would fight because we had the same content for like a brief second in time. Cause I just do what's viral, not what I care about. But while we were at dinner, we both realized neither of us have sugar daddies. We're actually both very hardworking and smart business ladies. That's why we're here today to entertain you and to make cash. So as I was saying, I don't have a sugar daddy. I have a boyfriend that I love. We're very serious. Um, like I said, I have standards. I'm not going to date a broke guy. Like I don't deserve a broke guy. I am gorgeous, stunning, delicious tits. I can cook. Can I interrupt? Besides your looks, you're also like a really good person. You have good character and morals and values. And that's why I like you. Thanks, mom. It's not just your blue eyes. <laughs> so I may not have a sugar daddy. But that doesn't mean that someone on this couch has never been on a fucking sugar daddy date. Blair. For the love of God. Out of the both of us, it's you. That's it, insane. It was an experiment. It was basically a hypothesis I had and I had to go test my theory. You know what? That's what my ex-boyfriend said when he did butt stuff with his best friend. Oh, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. It was an experiment, babe. <laughs> no, listen, listen. So basically, the sugar daddy thing has been going on for a very long time. And I was like, you know what? I'm a fucking fraud. I have never had a sugar daddy. I don't know where to get one. I don't know where to find one. I don't know how it works. What do you mean you don't know where to get one? I literally do not know. Look at your phone contacts. You have more billionaires on your phone than Forbes has. <laughs> None of them are useful, okay? <laughs> um, so I decide to locate a male and figure out how it works because I was like, if I keep making jokes about this, like I should know what I'm promoting because for a second there, for a brief second in time, I felt very guilty about promoting something that may be harmful to girls. I was like, wait, if these men are actually taking advantage of girls, that's fucked up and I don't want to do that. Like, like I was going to go test and see how forward, scary and abusive they are. A good test would have been like to do it with like 30 guys, but I, I did one. That's all I could stomach. Okay, I appreciate you saying that because- Back to your previous thought about, like, how it could be dangerous mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I obviously have this character that Sugar Baby, like, glamorizes that kind of lifestyle. It is based off of a real character, and I can't wait to tell you guys that story because it's incredible. Um, it's based off of an old roommate of mine, and the way that she told me about the lifestyle and all of this stuff, I was very aware of the risks and all of the stuff that can happen in between. Yes, you could be given money for your time and all these nice designer things, but that doesn't stray away from the fact that this is sex work. Yeah. And sex work always does come at a greater cost than just a monetary transaction. It can be very soul. Crushing. Crushing, yeah. So Absolutely. I wanted to see, um, because like it's funny, he who ha who online, but like what am I really doing? So I go on this website, I'm scrolling around and I actually find a guy that I've matched with previously on Hinge. So I was like, okay, I've already FaceTimed this dude. How old was he? (sighs) 65. Why did you organically (laughs) match on Hinge? In my defense. What are your age limits at? I didn't have one and that's why we matched because in his photos, he looks max 40. Okay. So basically he, we've already FaceTimed before I find him on this website. He asked me on a date, like to a regular restaurant dinner date at one of the nicest hotels in Miami. Question. Did you guys agree on any terms before no. going on this date? No. There was no terms agreed on. There was no money agreed on. There was like no talk of anything sexual. There was no even like, there was barely even flirting. It was like, would you like to go to dinner with me at 8 PM at this restaurant? And I said, yes. We go to a luxury restaurant in the Faena Hotel, which if you guys don't know, is one of the most expensive hotels in Miami. Before that, he offers to send me an Uber. He sends me an Uber Black, which is, by the way, the only Uber I'll accept. Otherwise, don't send me one. And then I get there. He is a perfect gentleman. We sit across each other from the table and he's kind of staring at me like like in a weird way to the point where you think I was texting my friends and I was like, do I not look like my photos? Like, Am I ugly in real life? Maybe he was staring at you because you were texting at the fucking dinner table. And no, I started texting after he was staring. Like he was like a wide eyed, bushy browed, long eyelashes staring at me. And I was so confused. So the menus come around and he's like, I actually can't see up close. So I can't see you unless you're <laughs> further away from me. <laughs> so then I calm down. Um, and he's like, I've been here before. I know what That's I like to so order. That's so cute. He's got like the Paris filter like in it built into his <laughs> yeah. vision. Like your pores I'm, are like, blurred. All smooth and gorgeous. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> um, he can't even see my eyelashes falling off. So, like, <laughs> So he like recommends a dish, which I told my followers about on live actually, and they would not stop laughing. He recommended the cod over wild rice. And I just think it's so funny because it tasted exactly like airplane food and it was incredibly mushy. And I got roasted for this because all my followers were like, Blair, it's because he probably has dentures. Like, <laughs> he probably needs something soft. <laughs> he needs something soft. <laughs> So is that all you guys had? Um, Yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know. We got some apps and some drinks um, and we talked and I was basically like, what's your Zodiac sign? Because that's very important to me. He's an Aries. I'm a Sagittarius. So we had a lot of fire at the table, a lot of chaotic energy. We talked about like, I was like, why are you here? And he's like, for the plot. And I was like, me too, for the plot. No way, he said Yes, he plot. said literally word for word for the plot. And then he goes, how can I help you? What do you want? Like, is there like a number in your mind? Like, can I help you with anything? And <sighs> unfortunately for I me, I am a little bit like, um, you know, Your independent. pride is a little bit too big. My pride is a little bit too big. 
And I was like, no, I don't need anything. Like I make enough money. Like I'm good. <laughs> and he's like, well, then I can help you with like business connections or something. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I went on a sugar daddy date and didn't ask for any sugar. I just needed a dad. God. <laughs> just needed a dad like I, I think my issue is that my dad's very i mean he's you didn't okay. need you didn't need sugar but you're like i just need a father figure. i just need honestly. a father figure are you busy um <laughs> anyway we had a great dinner he sent me back in an uber it was nice charming to be honest he was one of the biggest gentlemen i've ever met in my entire life he didn't touch me weird he didn't say anything weird he wasn't creepy it wasn't weird i got no money out of it i didn't ask for money i didn't want money so he was 65 right? he was 65 how old is your actual dad 55. I'm so you went on a date with a guy that's <laughs> older than your dad and you kind of liked him. Is there a good story here? No, <laughs> I did kind of like him. I still like him, but just like the optics don't work out for me. I don't so want to look if you had like an invisibility cloak, yeah, and no one could see what you guys were doing. You guys were just on the state, all of this stuff. This guy was gonna like show up for you, like pay for your shit. Do you see like do you think that you could have dated him even like momentarily? Based on personality, looks and character alone, I could have dated him. The only reason I didn't <laughs> is because of his age. I'm not joking. I don't care like I I I say that I don't care but like my max is like 40 and that's he still a doesn't lot. Doesn't look 65. <laughs> anyway, so he's been married twice. Um he's in Aries and Green flag. <laughs> Married twice. Green flag. <laughs> but the green flag about this is he had only good things to say about his exes. He spoke about women in a really respectful way. And Maybe I really he was the that. problem. Yeah, he admitted that he could have been the problem. <laughs> and like, I've never met a guy my age that would be like, my ex is a lovely woman. However, it didn't work out. I think he had a lot of time to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> my maturity level at 27 is that of a 65-year-old male. Because apparently it takes them that long to ripen. <laughs> <laughs> um so then everything's fine i make my little youtube video about it didn't really detail the experience but i detailed the situation beforehand so somehow it gets back to him i don't know how maybe he was stalking me it came up in his contacts and i'll actually read this to you i get a lengthy text message from him and i'm terrified shaking in my boots i'm like did i fuck up this man's life in any way like and I'll, I'll tell you what he told me. Well, he t he asked me on a second date after that. He asked me to go to a jazz concert. Um, and then he asked yeah, if I missed jazz. him. And didn't reply. And then I got the lengthy message. <sighs> okay. Hi, Blair. Your TikTok fans and me want to hear a part two of your finding a sugar daddy date. Exclamation point, exclamation point. I laughed very hard watching part one. It's I love smooth. your posts. This guy's smooth. You can I tell this guy has it. been around for a while. He's like, ah, he's give me some riz. He had riz, so much riz. Um, and then I replied and I was like, I replied like the next day because I was so nervous. I was like, I don't know what to say. So I said, LOL, part two was abandoned. Nothing juicy to say because you were a perfect gentleman. But also don't worry. I never give out any information and purposely obscure situations. So I'm not sure how you found it. And then he replied saying, I wasn't worried. Clearly you're a professional content creator and a very good storyteller. I was flattered by your attention and totally amused by your description. By the way, the 65-year-old Aries had two wives, not one. <laughs> so what year was he born in? Stop! <laughs> the age thing! No, but like real quick. No, because it's like, oh, 65. Like, okay, we get it. Like, he gets like social security checks. Like, but... He's still working. He has like a very good job. So he's like 66 now, right? I guess. Yeah, it's been a year. 66. Birthday. Birth year. Well, real quick. Don't you love that Gen Z can't do basic math? No, I can't do math. I can hardly read. What year? Just do was 2022. I, shut mind. up. Born in if I am 66. <laughs> you ready for this, Blair? Yeah. 1957. <sighs> 1957. Was that feel? during like World War II? Were you were you ever good at like history? No. What happened in the 50s? <laughs> So enough about this guy being old as fuck. Yeah, so that was my only, that was my one and only sugar daddy experience. Nothing really came from it, but I understood how the situation worked for the most part. Um, Can I ask you something? Yeah. A little bit personal. Sure. 
I know a lot of people that are in that lifestyle and like do that, but it's not just going to dinner. Just us saying like most sugar daddy relationships function on the basis of just going to dinner and get to know each other and just seeing how it goes. It's a transaction. I believe that almost all relationships are transactional, but especially this relationship, it's like most of the time pre pre existing terms that were agreed on, upon before like the date. Most of these relationships get sexual. It's basically like having a boyfriend that you have to give attention to in order to get money and like certain perks. And then I heard it's really draining emotionally, mentally, men- mentally, physically. Because you're mixing your love life with your work life. Yeah. And that's that's a recipe for disaster. It's like r- romantically you have to maintain someone else in order to get your bills bills paid, which I can I can't imagine that's like probably so stressful and draining and all of the above. Could you see how a girl our age in her 20s could go out on on dates with guys that are 65 plus and engage in sexual relationships with this person? Like, what are your, like, do you think in a million years you would ever be able to do that? It doesn't matter, like, the personality or whatever. But ultimately, that age gap is huge. And that's a huge turnoff for some people. In the wise words of Anna Nicole Smith, age is but a number to me. (laughs) No, but, like, I, I can see what you're saying. And I agree that it's probably difficult. I haven't tried it. I think the oldest guy I've ever dated or done anything with romantically is in his 40s and I'm in my late 20s. So there wasn't a significant age gap. Um, I think there's a different power dynamic when that stuff happens. And um, I think a lot of grooming goes on because even the guys that I've dated that are maybe like 15 years older than me, I realized how naive I was and how easy to manipulate and control I was and how that's not necessarily good for a relationship. I think it can work out if both people have good character and like moral values and they're really patient, kind and empathetic towards each other. But that's typically not the case. When a guy wants to date so far down his age bracket, I feel like it's because- And is agreeing to like pay. And is agreeing to pay. I feel like there's something mentally like off with him where he thinks women and their bodies are can be bought. And I think that's the dangerous part is that he's seeing you as a-, a Supply or, or what exactly brought him to the point to sign up for a sh- like a a sugar baby website and like agree like hey I want to be with a younger woman, but I don't think that I naturally can pull a younger woman, so I have to make this very evidently like a transaction like I will pay you to be with me like what is wrong with a guy to be like I will pay you to spend time with me. But I think all guys pay to spend time with us. Like even this weekend, we went out with our friends and the guys paid for dinners, games, whatever. Like they're gentlemanly in that way. So I just don't feel like- But we didn't gravitate towards them- Because of that. Because like, hey, if you guys hang out with us, like we'll pay for everything. That was not a conversation that we had. It was implied because they know who we are, but it's more like- it was not implied. (laughs) Kind of, yeah. I'm like, I'm not paying for fucking shit. Oh, it was implied we weren't going to pay, but it wasn't implied we were going to do anything with them. It was just like our friends, like being nice to us. I don't think they expected anything afterwards. But we gravitate towards them because they're cool. Yeah. We like spending time with them. Yeah. That's the point that I'm trying to- Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's like, I'm a little bit weary about like the guys on Sugar- daddy websites and like sugar daddies in general that are that old and like off the bat like hey like i will pay you to spend time with me i'm like why doesn't why don't people want to spend time with you i've had an experience with someone that i didn't meet on a sugar daddy dating website i met him in real life with you and he is on those kinds of websites so i asked him point blank because you guys know i just ask i was like what's up like why are you on those websites and he's weird as fuck though his reply to me was you do for free what those girls get paid for, basically implying I'm stupid. Furthermore, he said, it's just easier for me to pay them for the day and get rid of them because I don't want them blowing up my phone. So that's what's wrong with him. Yeah. He is incapable of making like a real human connection. connection. So he rather keep it transactional so they go away on command. So the second that he can get rid of them, they kind of have to oblige because it wasn't a real relationship. Yeah. It was So then in that case, do you think sugar daddies are bad? No. I don't think I know that that's like very confusing. I don't think they're bad. I do not think they're bad. 
because there's plenty of guys with like a lot of money and like have like worked very hard and maybe neglected their appearance or like the majority of their life has like already gone away because they focus so t- intensely on work or maybe they were married for a very long time and now they have to like date again and they're older but they have resources and stuff like that so they're probably thinking I don't really know how to date maybe I should just get like a sugar baby because it it just makes sense yeah or all I don't think that those people are bad but what always fascinates me about the relationship is that the power dynamic something all I I believe that every single relationship is transactional whether it was pre-agreed to or not when a woman is with a man it's because they want they expect x y and z from the man and the man expects x y and z from the woman not to sound red pilled but if a man is taking care of me financially and doing all of this stuff i'm going to take care of him emotionally because i'm his like emotional release when he comes home from a long day of work i am there for him i'm cooking for him i'm make cleaning i'm pressing his shirts I'm there for him. But if your boyfriend lost his job, would you still take care of him emotionally? Yes. But I would like to bring up something that was like, if he lost his job, I would still be there for him. But like the transaction now has shifted. What is he going to do? Because if now I'm making all the money, is he cooking? Is he cleaning? That is goes he- into like the chores like we do at home as women. It's a tra- men, like, everything is a transaction. Don't pay attention to. I just feel like that's such a sad way of thinking about it. Like I would genuinely like to fall in love for the person, which is a lot coming from me, but that's what I'm looking for. But okay, you have dated broke guys before. I will Lots expose you. <laughs> it's still- you introduced me to one. Thank you. I didn't know he was broke. You think I would do that on purpose? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I would never do that on purpose. <laughs> Mia Dio, Sugar Baby, introduces Blair Walnuts to- Bro, guys are like fucking COVID, bro. If you if someone coughs and your mouth is open, you'll catch one. Like, <laughs> um, they're super contagious. They will stick onto you. You've dated a broke guy before. Do mm-hmm. you not think that that relationship was transactional? No. So I'm going to use an example. Okay. Very lightly, obviously, because we're not doing details. But you dated this one broke foreign guy. They're all foreign, so really <laughs> narrow it down. So <laughs> put your lawsuits away, boys. <laughs> you dated this one broke foreign guy. You guys met like at a club or whatever, and like you didn't know he was broke, but eventually that became very apparent because you were paying for everything. But he would organize everything. He knew everyone in these countries. You didn't even have to think. You just had to turn off your brain and let him swipe your card, and you had a blast. But I- did he not provide value in that relationship, and you in turn s- floated him? The only difference there is like the moment I saw him, I knew I loved him. Like it it was instantaneous and that has never happened to me in my life. So like, you don't think that's a transaction? You finding someone physically attractive is not also part of a transaction. He wasn't just physically attractive. My heart skipped a beat when I saw him. Not the first time. We didn't even like go on a date until three months later. But every time I would see him during those three months, it was like I was getting ready for him. I was going out to see him. I was making sure I was in places. He Like I So can we not him. agree on the fact that companionship is not also part of a transaction. It's literally all transactional, Blair. But I, no. no matter how you think about it, it's a transaction. Love, I'm sure the audience will agree. Love is not transactional. It is. I'm standing firm on this one. Love it is. is. <laughs> yes. If this man had nothing, no connection. No penis. <laughs> no penis at all. No penis okay, whatsoever. Fine. fine if fine. this man had a bald ass mound instead of genitals. And the maximum thing that you guys could do is just slap it around each other. It has the same consistency of slapping some guy's fucking bald ass head. If this man had no penis, would you still love him? <laughs> Tell me. No. Me it's a transaction. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> you win this argument. <laughs> fine, fine. You're like, it's not a transaction. I just don't like seeing it that way because it seems so critical like so because you don't want to be a gold digger you I, don't want to be a, a superficial girl it's okay to be superficial i disagree with you i am happy to be a gold digger i am happy to be superficial i am not happy to think you're not happy to be a gold digger you clearly love broke men anyway now to our <laughs> ad break <laughs> 
<laughs> Blair needs to heal from those wounds. I didn't sign so up. <laughs> we are going to skip right to our ad break, guys. I did not sign up to be roasted, Mia. <laughs> I will get up and leave. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I know you guys have seen all the troubles and tribulations that I've gone through, so online therapy has been really helpful. From breakups, my dog dying, divorces, I've dealt with a lot of things in my life. Sometimes we're faced with a crossroads in life and don't know which path to take. Maybe you're thinking about a career change or feeling like your relationship needs some TLC. Whatever it is, therapy can help you map out your future and trust yourself to find the way forward. I love therapy because I can actually talk out a situation with with a professional instead of one of my friends who gives me horrible, terrible advice. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash DTF today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DTF. Now we are going to be talking about the plastic surgery procedures that I have gotten done. Before I jump into that, I just want to say six months ago, I made a YouTube video that was called I Was Ugly Until I Spent $30,000 on a New Face. In that video, I detailed my entire plastic surgery journey from start to finish. It literally started at the age of like 16. It's, it just has never ended. That video currently has 1.1 million views on YouTube, which is a lot for YouTube. But not only that, it a- attracted a lot of international media attention. I ended up on the New York Post. I know that I went viral in Hungary for some reason and like a whole bunch of different countries. No, I did crazy. I'm happy I helped. Yes. Blair told me to like change my thumbnail, change the title, all of that stuff just to make it juicier to click on. <laughs> Personally, I don't believe that that should have been international news. <laughs> like, I don't think that that was really that like, wow, and interesting that like people were talking it about was it. the title that really killed it. The word ugly and a dollar amount sounds obscene. Like some people for $30,000 is like how much they'll work for a very long time. So I think that was the shock factor about it if i would have known that i would have been on international news i would have done something international news worthy like some (laughs) fucking parkour off the great wall of china or something (laughs) but your plastic surgery journey is really interesting because personally i didn't think you needed any of it which i hate when everyone says in my comments but i understand the modifications to your avatar if you want to make some. I don't believe in taking plastic surgery as this very serious, crazy thing that needs to be taboo because plastic surgery has existed since like the 60s and it's just now being spoken about. It used to be scary to tell people you had it. Obviously, there has to be some type of standard though because there's a lot of people that like have body dysmorphia, not to like throw anyone underneath the bus but you know like that tlc show darcy and stacy like the twins Mm -hmm. they just keep getting shit that they don't need like literally it's too fucking much plastic surgery underneath the right pretenses and the right professionals is supposed to not change who you are completely but it is supposed to highlight your better features make you look like yourself but maybe like a face tune version (laughs) yeah i changed who i was completely i went from a eastern european nose to a barbie nose but you look the same you uh, you have barbie nose barbie slay (laughs) but you're (laughs) blair (laughs) bro you're blair you're blair yeah if i would have met you with your eastern european nose and then with this nose i would 100 percent know who you are Yeah, that's true. A lot of people didn't even notice the difference, especially men, actually, which was pretty shocking to me. But there's a huge psychological impact on changing who you are so drastically that you don't recognize yourself in the mirror. Do you think that happens a lot? Obviously, before I dive into my story, plastic surgery to influencers is handed out like candy. You can get anything you want done in any country for free. You don't have to pay shit. You just need to show up. My favorite story time for this is when South Korea offered me only and specifically full body liposuction. I was like, thank you. <laughs> thank I, you. I, I got a message to you from South Korea. Was it that exactly too? No, they were offering oh. me like facial work. Cool. We got targeted for specific issues. I was like, what's wrong According with my face? to their beauty standards. <laughs> I was like, what do you think is wrong with me? Actually, wait, hold up. I was like, wait a minute. Before you it. leave, what the fuck? <laughs> So I guess the best way to start this conversation is to talk about what I got done. I was 
15, 16 years old in high school when Kylie Jenner was in her King Kylie era. She just recently got lip injections and people were finally talking about her and she was getting this obscene amount of attention. She was a child dating Tyga. Like it was like this whole thing where this like, when you think about it, young girl, she was 17 or whatever, was thrown into this adult lifestyle, limelight, dating adults, all of this stuff. She went from having very small lips to huge lips that were dubbed Kylie Jenner lips. And it became so many people's obsession. People were obsessed with her lip transformation. Like there were songs that were like, shoddy, bad as hell, yeah, with them Kylie Jenner lips. Mm-hmm. All of that Uber every fucking where that shit was coming out during that time. Like it was just, it was massive, bro. Yeah. And I just so happened to have small lips. And I was like, bro, if she can go from being like a nobody with small lips to being Kylie Jenner with the Kylie Jenner lips. I want that. I want it so bad. Like, and why wouldn't I want that? I was literally being like spoon fed this beauty standard and I am a impressionable teen. I am weak. I'm still weak, but I was even weaker (laughs) at the time. Of course I wanted to get my fucking lips done. But I think it's interesting that you said your lips will change like your perception as a human. That's crazy. Uh, but that was that was like, literally people were roasting her being like, you are a nobody until you got your lips done. That's what people were saying at the time. And I remember that so clearly. I feel terrible for her. Mm-hmm. Um, Getting millions of people to critique your appearance is trauma. I would not recommend to anybody. And she mentioned that like a really big fact, like a really big like push factor for her to get her lips done was she had small lips and she kissed someone for the first time. They're like, wow, you were actually really good at kissing. I didn't think that you'd be really good at kissing because you have such small lips. Ah, bro. My pussy is small, but I'm good at fucking. uh, (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) God fucking damn it, Flair. Not everything is about you. All right. This is a narcissism podcast. That's like saying my brain is small, but I'm really good at thinking. <laughs> I showed up to a med spa with a, a fake, fake ID, ID bro. pretending to be one of my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and I paid for lip filler that was like, it was like $350 at the time. And I did have a job. I was a live streamer. I was a broadcaster on younow.com because I had a small YouTube following. I had like 30000 YouTube followers and I got partnered on this broadcasting service and I would make something like one to two thousand dollars a month in high school broadcasting I would get out of school do my homework really quickly and then broadcast for like five hours so I had all of this money saved up and I was like oh my god I want to get my lips done slay how much did you get done I got one syringe originally done and I obviously noticed a difference like one syringe is a lot when you think about it like in your lips in such a small area so I did have lips. I had, you know, some plump lips all of a sudden. I showed up to school and they were like, bruised as fuck. And I know that I was like sitting at lunch um, across from like all my friends. And they're just like, what is wrong with your lips right now? And I was just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like I can't even like, I can't even like sip through a straw because they were so swollen and purple. And I was like, no, like just don't worry about it. I told my closer friends that I got lip injections and they were like, oh my God the fuck how did your parents let you do that i was like they have no idea like i had a fake id like don't worry and i get really into lip filler throughout like my high school career or whatever like every time i had enough money to i would keep going back in and just get them bigger and bigger and bigger and they were just they look so good right now i just kept overfilling them to the point that they would just bleed into the rest of my face i had a lot of migration in my face because I just kept getting them bigger and bigger and bigger. And around 19 years old, I already had like a massive following on TikTok and stuff. And people were talking about how like horrible my lips were. And I was like, I do need to get them dissolved. So I did get them dissolved. And that was a great decision on my part. Did it hurt a lot? Oh, it hurt like a bitch. Those hurt so bad. Getting your lips dissolved alone makes me so scared to get lip filler and fuck up. Because it feels like fire underneath your skin that you cannot escape. I might actually like it. I'm into pain. I know you are. <laughs> yeah, you might be like, do it harder. Like, harder. Inject me harder, daddy. So how many times have you had lip filler and how many syringes are total in your lips after the dissolving? Because I'm curious, if I wanted your lips right now, what? how many milligrams would I have to get? 
So when I was 18, I had four and a half cc's of lip filler in my lips. That's crazy because I've only gotten two in my entire life. And it's been like four years now. I had four and a half cc's in my lips. They were huge, bro. I had really big duck lips. It looks like I was blowing everyone a kiss. I need to see photos of this. I hope we edit photos in because we're all curious. I have photos. Okay. In your defense, I don't think it looks that bad. It was terrible. However, I could not smile. Interesting thing about lip filler is that it doesn't change the length of your lips. It only changes the width. So like it causes it to just like explode there. Yeah, exactly. I also blew up my lips to be way too big one time, like water balloons. But that was my um, get hot quick plan. What do you guys think about my old lips? Tell me down in the comments. Was it too big or do you like it like Blair because you're demented? <laughs> Let me know. At 17 years old, I actually saved up $5,000. So right after I graduated from high school, I got my nose done with Dr. Jason Altman in Coral Gables, Florida. I almost died getting a nose job done. And the crazy part is, is that I would do it again, bitch. I would do it again. How, what happened? I thought they were super safe. So apparently I have this very special thing about me, not I just always... my personality or my sparkling blue eyes, but I have this thing called malignant hypothermia. So when I go under anesthesia, your internal body temperature is supposed to significantly drop because all of your body stops functioning, essentially. For me, it goes all into overdrive mm -hmm. and I get a fever that could literally cause brain damage. Maybe it did. Maybe that's why I am the way that <laughs> I am. But I get this fever that goes really high. All my muscles begin to contract and this could stop your heart. Did you know that going into getting a nose drop that you could die? So they did all of the tests that they were supposed to. Not only is this condition extremely rare, but there's no actual way to test for it except unless you like go to get a muscle biopsy, which is not required for surgery at all. So how was I supposed to know that I was a carrier for this when one side of my family has gotten surgery done and stuff done and all of that stuff and they've been completely fine and I'm not really in touch with the other half of my family that maybe has like uh, any type of idea that they have this. So yeah, I, like I almost died and he originally did not want to oper operate me. He was like, why are you here? Like there's nothing like wrong with you, you know? And I just told him, like, I just don't like the way I photograph. Like, my nose is too round, all of this stuff. I just want it to be, like, more snatched, smaller. I just want to feel more confident. And he was like, oh, this is an Instagram thing, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, you know what? You are right. Takes a look. He takes a couple pictures. And then he looks into my septum. And I did have a deviated septum from just, like, trauma from playing soccer. And so he tells me, okay, let's do this. I'm not going to break your nose bone. That's not going to happen. You don't need that. I am going to shave a little bit of the hump that you have on your bridge. And I'm going to take away some of the cartilage on the tip of your nose to make it look more angular and bring it up a little bit. Recovery should be easy. Surgery should be literally 45 minutes maximum. It should not take a long time at all. It was supposed to be very minor, the That's stuff that I got done. crazy because my nose surgery was four hours. Four hours? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Mine was only supposed to be 45 minutes, but it ended up being two hours uh, because I started having this reaction halfway through surgery. But did, you didn't feel anything though, right? I'm completely put under. Okay. I'm, I'm not here. Okay. I'm just, I'm, li I'm literally in a black hole. Like, that's all I remember. I just Me remember. Every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I remember people just being like, countdown from 10. I'm like, I don't know math, but 10, 8, 4, <laughs> fall asleep immediately. Yeah. And when I wake up from my surgery, I am burning. I'm so hot and so uncomfortable. Like not only did I just get my nose done, so it feels very stuffy. Like I can't really use my nose or anything. I have bandages that I can kind of see on my face, but I'm hot. My skin is hot to the touch and I'm covered in ice packets from head to toe. They have ice all over my body and I'm still hot and I'm begging for them to put more ice on me or put an ice cube in my mouth, something to help me cool down, put ice on my head. Like I was like, I just don't understand why I'm so hot right now. because they wanted to ice you out. It was the only time in my life that a man has iced me out, so. <laughs> but then I realized that I had, like, two nurses looking over me looking worried as shit. Like, are you okay? Are you good? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like, what's, like, what? And then they're like, no, just checking. How many fingers am I holding up, by the way? I'm like, I, fuck, one, two, three, I think. They're like, okay, good. Um, Of average intelligence, but okay. 
<laughs> and I'm just like, dude, I need water. They're like, we can't give you water yet. And and they bring the doctor in and I tell him like, please, I need like a drop of water. Like my mouth is so hot. Like everything is so hot, please. And he approved like a little bit of water in my mouth to kind of like bring me back. And after I go pee, which is like the final stage of you waking up from anesthesia because your bladder is the last organ in your body to wake up after undergoing general anesthesia. And I'm okay. And I'm sitting down in a chair. They bring my family in. My doctor comes in and he was like, you um, could have died if I didn't have the anesthesiologist that I had or all of that stuff. Like if you just like got gotten operated with literally any doctor and maybe even like left the country, like you could have died. And I was like, well, can you explain that to me? So he explains to me, I have malignant hypothermia, my, I'm basically like lethally allergic to general anesthesia. And the only way to counteract this reaction is to administer a muscle relaxant called dantrolene. Anesthesiologists know about this condition. They're trained on this condition. It's very rare, but when it happens, this is like an anesthesia thing. Mm -hmm. So they should have dantrolene on them. They should be able to reverse this and all of that stuff. He goes on to tell me this happened mid-surgery and everyone was like, should we stop the surgery? I'm halfway done through your nose. I tell the anesthesiologist, do what you have to do. The nurses are going to help you. Let's bring, let's save her life. But not only that, as you guys do that, I'm going to finish her nose because imagine a 17 year old girl who was completely fine before surgery waking up with a botched nose job she's gonna wish that she had died on that table that's gonna be terrible because then i have to i would have to like heal and then i'd have to wait like a year before like another surgery that would have been catastrophic for my self-confidence and all of that stuff so something that i thought like going in like is gonna make me feel so much better about myself it just, it was like a very real situation like it could have been very dangerous i was left with a great nose which is why i do not regret doing this at all I love my nose job. I think out of all of the things that I have gotten done to myself, my nose job is by far the most important one to me because it just changed everything. All of a sudden, my face from looking round and maybe not completely balanced, it was angular, it was natural looking, and it just instantly boosted my confidence. You just recently got a nose job. How do you feel after your nose job? Literally the exact same way. And thankfully, I didn't have such a terrifying reaction because I actually didn't know you almost died on the table until like five days before my surgery. You like neglected to inform <laughs> me of that fun little factoid. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, you inspired me to get a nose job. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag influencer. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I just went to Turkey to get mine. Um, and I had a great time. The reason why I went, because I checked out Mia's doctor, um, but he couldn't give me like before and after photos and I'm very like mentally sick. Like I need to know what's going on. And also like he told me I had a very difficult nose to operate on. Like I had an ethnic Eastern European nose with like thick skin or something. Um, not diminishing his talent at all, but just like in America, most people don't have that nose. So like, it's not so common. So I went to Turkey where like every other bitch has my nose and they're like, this is like cake pops, you know? Like, um, and I really liked my doctor. He was really chill. I also had a deviated septum and I had something like a swollen turbine or something in my nose that I had caused- Out and about. From smoking or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like he didn't say, he didn't care. But um, yeah, I got it done. I got the inside and the outside done. And when I woke up from surgery, I felt like I had two hot cigarettes burning into my nostrils. And I was like, for what reason? And in Turkey, they don't give you any pain meds. They give you like baby Advil, right? In America, uh, you stub your toe, you get Oxycontin. Okay. For what reason? Are so you giving me baby Advil? After my nose job, they prescribed me Percocets, but like my parents are like very much like anti-drug. Like you give her one Percocet because she's in pain and she's just going to be out in the streets skid rowing. You got Percocets prescribed? Did I, was I allowed to take them by my parents? No. I was what? given Tylenol PM and plus my whole body was just reeling from this really traumatic fever that I had. So all of my muscles were so sore and my throat was like swollen because I just had this adverse reaction to the to the gas version of the anesthesia that they shove down your throat. So I was in so much pain for the first week, like not my nose, my body was in so much pain. And you would have thought that maybe like this like crazy experience would have deterred me from going under the knife again. No, <laughs> no, no, definitely not. 
So I was scrolling on TikTok because I'm very easily influenced and I'm weak. <laughs> and I noticed that like a lot of people were like getting like something called like a flux eye thread lift done. Yeah. And I did a lot of research and it was like, okay, this is super temporary. Like it doesn't last very long. And I was like, okay, like I just want to get it done. Like, can we just do it? And she was like, you actually need to come in for Botox. Have you ever gotten Botox done before? No, I hadn't. I came in. She gave me Botox two weeks before um, the procedure. Two weeks later, I go in and she does the thread lift. The thread lift looks like it could be extremely painful, but they do a really good job of numbing you. They literally like shoot you up with anesthesia. By the way, I'm not allergic to like a topical anesthesia or like an anesthesia that could be given to you like at a dentist or like a med spa. The anesthesia that will send me into overdrive to the point that I die is the anesthesia that is delivered in the form of a gas. Ways to kill me a deal. Anesthesia. Broke men. <laughs> Broke men. Anesthesia. Yeast infections. Um, <laughs> so I undergo this procedure. Now I have a nose job, my lips done, all of that stuff. I go to Turkey to get my veneers done. I got an offer as an influencer. This was also during the pandemic. So I was like, I was like, can I even go to Turkey? They oh, they were like the first country to open up. They were like, screw this. Everyone come in. Get your nose, jo- <laughs> get your hair transplants, get your BBLs, get your everything here in Turkey. They I all- love the flights coming off from Turkey. It's just everyone has plastic surgery out. Bandages, stitches, nose, blood. Everyone. Like, everyone. I'm like, what is going on here? I look like I was like the only one who like didn't get anything done, but that's because I had a mask on and you couldn't see my brand new pearly white <laughs> teeth that I couldn't even talk in yet because I wasn't even used to them. Mind you, there was nothing wrong with my teeth. I just had really pronounced mammalons. So I had like ridges in my teeth. So when my lips were lightly parted like this, just like a light part, like a little Marilyn Monroe part. They looked crooked because the bottom of the teeth just had like ridges. It was literally not traumatic. We'll put up a photo. (laughs) It it wasn't like a big deal, but like I was already working like full time in front of a camera and I just wanted to look good and like perfect. And I was a control freak and all of that stuff. Uh, Holding myself to an unattainable standard unless you go get stuff done. But you also taught me that guys like it when girls smile and girls like it when guys are serious faced. And that is very true. Yeah. There was like a study on this. Men like smiley women with good like pearly whites or like whatever because they look healthier, better for childbearing or whatever. And then girls like guys that are more stoic. (laughs) Mia scientifically attracts men. (laughs) (laughs) There was a study on this. Okay, Mia, there was a like- study on this. I'm actually attractive, <laughs> by the way. Um, so I get my teeth done in Turkey. I almost they almost fucked me up though because of there oh. was there was a language barrier. Oh god! I told them that I wanted veneers and I highlighted the fact that I wanted veneers because my natural tooth structure was really healthy. And a lot of people go to Turkey to get crowns. Uh, and crowns, they shave your teeth down to like little baby shark posts. Like those are the ones that you see like on TikTok where people look like vampires and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And then they put a crown on top, which that is so bad for your teeth. Like it is so bad because you're getting rid of literally all of the natural structure, putting this crown on top of your tooth that needs to re- be replaced like every 10 years on a minimum. So do veneers though, no? Yes. But let me explain to you the difference. Because you don't already, you don't have any tooth structure underneath the crown. So every time that you're like replacing them, you're getting rid of more and more until you need implants because there's not going to be enough to withstand a crown. That makes sense. What about veneers though? Like if you took off your veneers, could you go around without teeth? I have teeth underneath my veneers, but I will tell you why I can't because aesthetically it's going to be off. They removed a small sliver of my enamel only on the top, not in the back, not on the sides, none of that, only on the top to fit the porcelain veneer over my tooth so it wouldn't look like like horse teeth. Looking back, I should have gone... I should have tried my luck as an influencer with with someone in the United States or something. Or not even. They do this in Colombia. They also do this in Turkey. I should have looked into someone who could have done composite bonding for my vin- for my teeth composite bonding is literally like a white like bonding like a s- building like a substance like it kind of looks like a gel when they're like putting it looks like acrylic when they're putting it on it looks like you're getting your like fake nails done and they form like a perfect thin layer of a tooth on top of your natural tooth with minimal prep 
So you literally have 100% your natural tooth structure underneath, but it's also like permanent. Like it's not like you can't just remove it without like getting new ones put on. But that would technically be the safest way to get stuff done if you have very healthy tooth structure. Did I know that going in? No. Did I even give a shit? No. I was <laughs> reckless, a lot more reckless than I am now because I know now and I'm telling you guys. Get composite bonding. <laughs> if you have a healthy tooth structure like literally there's nothing wrong with your teeth you just want stuff for aesthetic reasons get look into composite bonding for mama slay for mama (laughs) for mama i do have to say that veneers are a lot of work i am really good on brushing my teeth after i eat flossing with a water pick because i was the type of person who never had a cavity in my entire life but when I got veneers, sometimes like they will chip or whatever and I won't even notice like because it's not like a visible chip mm. and bacteria will go inside of these like crevices and start forming a cavity. So I have to like go in, they have to like clean it out and then re- like restore my veneer. They have to like pack it back in with what it needs to like be solid. It's a lot, it's a lot, a lot of work. It's a lot of money to maintain. But the reason why I got my teeth done in Turkey was a whole mouth was $5,000 USD. I didn't pay anything because it was like a deal. Um, But in the United States, getting 20 porcelain veneers in your mouth can go upwards to like $100,000. On average, it's like 40. Oi. Yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? That's so much money. Yeah. Not affordable at all. And Turkey and Colombia and all of these other places, super cheap. Whole mouth, 5K. Yeah, like I paid thirty five hundred for my nose job, and here they wanted like between seven and twenty thousand dollars. So, bye. Have you guys had any work done? And do you guys have any horror stories? Was it a positive experience for you? Was it a negative experience? Did you guys go abroad and get some shit done that you did not like? Please. DM us on Distrust Fund on Instagram and let us know your horror stories. We would love to read them and love to share them with our audience. We will keep you all anonymous if you guys so choose. Let and us we'd know. We'd also like to know if you would do it again because I would do every single thing I've ever done again. Not just plastic surgery, but also life. <laughs> I would do it all again. I would do it again. <laughs> so now I have a nose job. I have like my Botox, like I've been getting like my thread lifts. My lip filler is now dissolved to like a more natural thing. I have a full set of veneers. Am I done? No. What else do you want to get? I got a breast augmentation and I went back to the same guy who did my nose, Dr. Jason Altman, because he was familiar with my malignant hypothermia situation and all of that stuff. So he also cleared out a room and made sure that he hadn't operated anyone in that room for like two days to make sure that there was like no trace of like the gas in the air that could maybe like trigger the reaction or any of that. So it was safe. It was a controlled environment. I got my boobs done. I went from having literally only nipples. I didn't have any boobs. I underwent like a massive like weight loss thing where I had no boobs at all. All of the fat, I was was like 11% body fat. That's crazy. 10 to 11% body fat. My period was on and off. Like I had no body fat whatsoever. Yeah. And I was feeling really insecure about my boobs because my ex-boyfriend at the time used to like show me a lot of influencers that I would meet and be like, oh my God, look at how good her boobs are. You should or, have like, done the same thing with guys like models but like, look at how buff he is and perfect. I and- was not that devious. Uh, he was, he himself had let himself go. Horns. Yeah. He himself had let himself go when we were dating. Cause like, he just like gained like a lot of comfort weight. And like, I'm not the type of person that cares. If you just like remain, if you stay the same person from the person that like I first met and I fell in love with, like I will always like love you that's just how i am like i will always love you like let yourself go don't feel confident whatever i'm still gonna hype you up and and give you like this incredible ego because in my eyes you're still gorgeous you're still beautiful you're still the person that i love he was a hypocrite he was letting himself go and i was getting in shape like literally like great like abs like skinny like taking care of myself the whole thing and he was still finding things to pick apart and have me like edit about myself then he what the worst part was he was doing this and then telling me how much he hated like fake bitches like oh like i hate the fact that you like got your teeth done i mean they do look really good though like it does you do look better but like oh i just like hate all like that fake stuff and like whatever and he's like literally showing me influencers with like skinny bbls and boob jobs and all of this stuff and i'm just like you gullible man i hate him so much i can't even never let a balding goat tell you how you should look he wasn't balding his brain was though (laughs) (laughs) it was losing ridges by the minute but 
did I love him or was it just like I was 19, he was 30 and he was like showing me the world and like I was doing all of this fun stuff and whatever. Like I was just like. We got manipulated. We got scared. I don't know. It's it just like with the dynamic was off. I see that now. Um, I kind of want to date a 19 year old now to like see. So you can ruin his life. How much I can get away with. I just, like, want to reverse the roles to, like, see what it feels like on this side. Because I felt what it's like dating someone a lot older than I want to hurt someone. No, I want to know. Like, are they that dumb? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just curious now. Like, yes, I was that dumb. <laughs> so he was making me feel very self-conscious because I was just like, yes, like, I'm at, like, my top physical shape possible. But everything that makes me or what I thought at the time would make me more woman-like, it was gone. I didn't have a butt. I didn't have thighs. Like, I literally looked like I was, like, a track star. I had that little body fat. And I I liked it. I, like, thought it was, like, pretty because I felt, like, I felt so fit. healthy Healthier. and fit. And I was, like, working towards something. And I was just so proud of myself that, like, I invested so much time into this. And I was seeing the results that I have never before in my life seen. He told me, like, I think that you would be, like, perfect with a boob job. And that's something that I was kind of, like, entertaining in the back of my mind because I was also kind of feeling insecure about it, I guess. Like, I was like, oh, like, I would love to wear this top, but, like, it just doesn't make sense because I'm just, like, so flat and I don't feel like a woman and I'm already, like, young and I'm dating, like, this older guy and he's surrounded by womanly bodies. It was just – it came from a place of insecurity, me getting this boob job. I know. Sigh. Sigh. Sigh all you want. I go back to the same surgeon. I explain to him what I want. I told him, like, I have no boobs. Like, I just want – to have something, something that you, that I can't get rid of no matter how much weight that I, that I lose. I want something that looks natural, but I want it to be full. And did you get them in through the armpit, the nipple, the boob? I got them done underneath the muscle, like here, right and underneath the boob. the boob. I have a scar yeah. because I suntanned kind of after surgery because I was so excited to show them to the beach. <laughs> You're like, mm. I'm going to take these to the beach. Like, <laughs> I'm going to take these to the beach. I'm going to take my boob job to the beach. Like. The scar is not bad though. It's been like two years now and like it's like white, but yeah, it's it's, it, it's it's a lot bigger than like someone who would have like taken care of their scar. I got mine in through the nipple and you can't really see a scar. I think only one guy has noticed my boob job. The rest are just like dumb. By the way, the recovery process for the boobs, like, it was pretty easy. I was taking the Percocets because it was painful. I just, like, have, like, a very low pain tolerance and all of that stuff. One thing that I did not appreciate from my ex-boyfriend was that the doctor told him that I could not have sex for, like, two, three weeks. And he was like, that's not sustainable, Amia. Like, even if it, like, hurts you, like, you're just going to have to, like, just I lay hate, there. I hate, I hate that. So it was a painful experience for me. And like, I was like, just don't move me or like whatever. And like, ugh, like I hated that part. But like, it's so good that you left him because imagine like when you have a baby or if something happens. He would have sucked. He ne Every time I would get sick, I wouldn't see him for days. Exactly. And we lived together. Yeah. So it came to a point that when he started to get sick, I was like, I'm not going to get sick with you because I used to do that. I would get sick yeah. with him so I could take care of him. I was like, fuck you. You've never once been here for me. Even when I had like mental health issues, he would just get mad at me because I wasn't putting out enough and say that our relationship was crumbling when in reality I was just like going through stuff because I had been through like a really traumatic experience on a reality TV show that I would love to tell you guys about. He wasn't the rock that I needed. But it's so good that that relationship crumbled, shattered, failed because that's not who you deserve. No. Pieces absolutely of shit not. deserve other pieces of shit. And you're not a piece of shit, so you don't deserve that. Period. End of story. No, he just – he definitely was not – and he wasn't, like – I don't think he was, like, in love with me. He was, like, in love yeah, with, was. like, the idea of being with me. He's just a narcissist. Absolutely a narcissist. So that's all I have done. And then I've – been going to go see Dr. Ron in Miami and he does my Botox. Like he keeps me up on my Botox. And occasionally, like once a year, we'll do like a thread facelift that lasts like four months or whatever. And I really like those results. It makes me look super snatched. I love it. And that's kind of just what I've been maintaining this whole time. I do not have the desire to go down underneath the knife. I'm very content with the way that I look. A lot of people could be like reeling from this and being like, wow, she like took it to an extreme. Like maybe she has body dysmorphia. I'm like, no, I know exactly what I look like. I knew what my insecurities were. I targeted them perfectly. And my self-confidence, if I have a problem with it myself, just know it's not with the way that I look. <laughs> it's because there's something else going on on here. And I'm just like, why don't I work harder? Why don't I do this? Like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I not funny enough? It has nothing to do with the way that I physically look. So, so I've do seen you feel better after you are satisfied with your appearance? I do because I may be crazy, but I'm crazy hot. You know what I mean? So money does buy happiness. Yes. 
That is the thesis of this podcast. <laughs> Money does my happiness. I mean, plastic surgery is not going to fix the internal issues that you have with yourself. And I really like to highlight that. But the external issues, like if you don't fucking like the way that you photograph because of your nose, just get a good doctor. Don't lose touch with yourself. I hope that you still look like yourself after surgery because I feel like I still do look like myself. Dude, I just look like a better. like a snatched version. And that's it. I recognize myself. I know exactly what I look like. I know who I am. And that's kind of how plastic surgery should be taken advantage of. It's yeah. not to change who you are, but maybe highlight some stuff that you want to highlight or correct some things that you don't agree with because we weren't put... It's funny how we have a choice to do everything on this planet except for how we look. Like... We were put on this earth and I didn't get to dictate how I looked at all. So, I mean, if I can like go and like tweak some things like my hair color, like my nose, all of that stuff. Customize your avatar. Customize your avatar. Like fucking do it. Like I don't give a shit. I don't know why it's stigmatized. It's not something to be shameful about. Um, I think it's more damaging to lie about the stuff that you've gotten done and make people believe that everyone else is perfect and like they're the problem. Yeah. When that's not true. Literally like your faves. Your faves are getting lip injections, veneers, all of that stuff. And you might not notice exactly what they've gotten done, but it's unrealistic to strive for perfection because everyone's just human. Yeah, yeah. At the I, end of the day, we all have the same experiences and insecurities. And if something is bothering you that much that it's taking up significant brain space and, like, energy in your mind, just go change it. Like, ever since I got my nose done, I stopped thinking about my side profile, how I look, if a guy likes me because of my looks. Like, now I have nothing to blame but my personality <laughs> <laughs> when someone is mad at me. Oh, no. Like the consequences of my actions. <laughs> But like I, it makes me a lot happier because I don't think about it. I think like, okay, I'm pretty enough. Like, so if we are having some kind of issue, it's a communication one or a I'm insane and accidentally ghosted you or like I fucked your best friend. Like, sorry for that. <laughs> but like <laughs> at least I hate it when that happens. I'm not worried because I used to sit in the car next to guys or like in a plane or whatever. And I used to turn this way the whole time. Or like, so they, they didn't see my side profile. Like, that's so sad to have to constantly think about your best angles and your best poses. And like, when people used to take pictures of me, I would always be so worried about what they would look like. Now I don't give a fuck. I'm cute from every angle. <laughs> <laughs> period <laughs> and also that's why i think like people are gonna freak out when i say this but i just think that instagram filters are so good for you hold on do not cancel me for saying this but people that have money and resources can get plastic surgery professional photographers professional lighting as well as professional photoshop editing everyone else to level the playing field at least a little bit they can have a free instagram filter so that's why I hate when people are like, Instagram filters are so bad for you. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I just think it's an issue of transparency at the end of the day. It's like, are it, you going to lie about it? It says what filter I'm using. Do you, do you think that in every photo you should say, I got a nose job, threads, a Botox, and lip filler? No. Do, why do I have to say like, this is an edited photo? Okay. What? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm I feel, sticking I, out for the poor people. They deserve free facial adjustments if they want them. <laughs> I think filters are just a little different. I don't think they're different at all. <laughs> An Instagram filter and a nose job are the same thing. We can agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> that is my platform to stand on. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I guess me and Mia will argue in the next episode about something equally as controversial. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Distrust Fun. If you guys like it, make sure to like it on whatever platform that you're listening to this on. Save, leave us a review, download, worship us, all of the stuff. <laughs> All of it. We need all of the love in order to get this podcast rolling. I would like a review, no matter if it's bad or good. If you want to roast me in the comments, do it. Don't be a pussy. Write your real username. <laughs> you better if you're gonna if you're gonna talk shit, don't do it on a fake account either. <laughs> I want to see what your dog looks like. We'll see you next week at the same time. Don't forget to follow us on our Instagram Distrust Fund and our normal Instagrams where we are separate girls. Um, bye. Yay Networks.